Hello and welcome back my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have another legal loss for Henry. Honestly, I don't know the count so far and I couldn't be bothered to find out how many times this has happened. But I do know that this is not the last time since all the legal stuff these people are involved into. Prince Harry loses application in mirror phone hacking trial. The Duke of Sausages lawyer made a bid to enter three new witnesses statements into evidence on Friday morning. It comes just days after a judge denied the Duke's application for a legal challenge in his separate legal case against the Home Office. He argued the evidence is important and that there was good reason why the statements had not been provided sooner. Uh, well, that sounds like plain old incompetence to me. You know that these legal services do not come cheap. And since Harry and Meghan's income is tied to how many lies they can spew about the royal family, well, it is getting more and more scarce. Uh, not to mention all the expenses of living in a 16-bathroom mansion with he consistently flees for a long time. Richard Eden, Harry's U.S. council tax hits more than £100,000. In royal circles, they've been nicknamed the Kardashians. In tribute, it's explained to their appetite for accepting awards for themselves, talking about themselves, doing programs about themselves, but it should, in fairness, be said that the Duke and Duchess of Sausages are paying the price for embracing the celebrity lifestyle in California, such as the property tax, the U.S. equivalent of council tax, slapped on their mansion in Montecito. Eden can reveal that this year it amounts to a vertiginous £116,000, more than 24 times the highest council tax in Britain. To make the life of the Montecito Moors a bit more complicated, there are also reports that, for some reason, Harry wants to meet with Meghan's father, Thomas. According to Neil Sean, who I'm sure that he uses that word allegedly in cases like this, Meghan Markle is allegedly resisting Prince Harry's efforts to meet her father, Thomas Markle. Journalist Neil Sean believes Mr. Markle can't put Harry and Meghan's marriage back on track because the Duchess of Sausages now has an inclination to do things independently. He said that Harry wants to connect, wants to connect with his father-in-law and thinks that his meeting could perhaps clear up a lot of mishaps and mistruths, <laughs> you think. Meghan's father and half-sister Samantha Markle has long criticized her for one reason or another since she got married into the British royal family. Well, uh, he has a point. Well, Neil Sean, Lady Colin Campbell, according to Taz and myself, have uh, talked about all the angles that those couple troubles can come from. And it would not be surprising because all what that we hear is money problems, legal problems, unresolved family issues, and paid-for awards. And you know, what is the only thing they can do is to attack and slander the royal family. And that's why we get headlines like this one. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry entertaining the idea of another tell all as they still have juicy stuff to divulge. Now, before you die of cringe, I'm going to read what is the supposed new content that they have. And then I'm going to give you a couple comments about that. There are a lot of nuances from their story that they feel are still missing after the documentary and Harry's book, an insider divulge about the former senior royals. Another source alleged that the Duke and Duchess of Sausages still have a big screen story to tell about what happened in the palace, regardless of prior media they've done. There is no doubt they would get a handsome payday for it, which is hugely tempting, a third insider spilled. Meghan is really pushing for it to happen, while Harry wants to trade more carefully, but they are entertaining the idea and their team are talking about the kind of money they would want for the rights to their story. They added, Well, I'm going to tell you what is this about. It's no secret that they have been testing the waters all this time, and saying this, I'm about, I'm about to expose the Harkle's business model. Because so far, the fat paychecks have come from uh, revealing things to the media, 
the Oprah interview, Netflix, Spotify, in one way or another, they have been exploiting their fame for their own gain, only that their fame only comes from the royal family and attacking the royal family. So, essentially, what they have been doing since Mexit is the same process over and over again. First, they steer some level of controversy that attracts the public attention, that brings headlines, that gets them contracts. In fact, Mexit was planned to be the spark of everything, to get the ball rolling. Once you get that initial spark of attention, then you begin to imply that this has to do with how you were treated by the royal family. And the right word here is imply, because that's what gets people talking about it, right? It's like in an incomplete puzzle that you can't help but try to fix in some way or another. Find the missing pieces and complete it. But the trick is that there is no puzzle. They get to contracts because people want to know the complete story. People want to know what truly happened. And to be fair, I'm going to cut Spotify some slack here because, well, our swipes was not designed for Megan to spill all the beans about herself. She making our swipes about herself is another thing, but that was not the original intention. Anyway, they released the Netflix horror mentory conveniently after Queen Elizabeth died, and also that bucket of poor shit called Spare. Uh, I'm talking about the book, by the way, and not about Harry. They release those tell-alls attacking the royal family, attacking the monarchy, and uh, attacking the commonwealth. But at the same time, they backtrack on all this stuff on racism, saying that the royal family was never racist, that it was unconscious bias. That it was you who misinterpreted their words. How dare you? How could you not understand their message of freedom and emancipation? So they can use the additional attention that they get from the products uh, Netflix and Penguin Random House paid for, and paid for assuming that people would be interested in the Harkless story since the Oprah interview was such a global phenomenon. What they are looking for is to keep the ball running, to use Spare as if it was a second Oprah interview, because let's face it, Spare was going to sell in one way or another. But now I ask you, what do you think was the common denominator of the Oprah interview, the Netflix horror mentory, and Spare? And yes, you guessed right. Lies and half-truth. And that market is really profitable. Because you can never run out of things if you make them up along the way. You just need to test how much BS is the public willing to buy at any given point. Yeah, you get some backlash along the way, but also measure what kind of lies and half-truths can you use the next time. The only advantage they have is that the royal family will never confirm or deny whatever they claim. So they can, in theory, keep their BS game going on forever. And that is the thing. That is not sustainable. That has diminishing returns. At some point, the majority of people, including people who were true Megan fans, begin to realize this is nothing more than a grift, because there is no substance, nothing to sustain those claims. That must not be good for the soul, and it will begin to show. Believe that. My Roger Rogis, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified on my upcoming episodes. The two most important words, much love and bliss.